So welcome friends and clients of New York Life. This is our first Cinco de Mayo virtual cooking event that we will be sharing some of the magic that happens in this great restaurant of Mayawal here in Sacramento. And shortly you will be meeting the executive chef and restaurateur Ernesto Delgado who will be sharing all his secrets with us today. And so I'm super excited for all of us to have an amazing evening of cooking, some margarita drinking, or maybe a lot of margarita drinking, your choice. But thank you for joining us tonight. Everyone has to come and visit Maya Wal. And here to welcome us to his beautiful restaurant is our host, Ernesto Delgado, our executive chef for today and our um, tour guide of this beautiful establishment. Hello, Patricia. Hello, thank How you. How are you today? I am wonderful, <laughs> enjoying the day. Thank you for your cordial uh, welcome to your restaurant. So tell us about Mayawal. How long have you been in business and what's the address? So Mayawal uh, got started in 2012. Uh, we're located in downtown Sacramento at the corner of 12th and K. It's a beautiful location. We're in the Hyatt building. We're a block from the Capitol, a block from the convention center, a block from the cathedral, and truly just in downtown Sacramento. It's a, it's a beautiful location. We have an amazing, beautiful indoor restaurant, dining option, and we have a beautiful outdoor option that it's just, the best, you know, for any type of celebration. Um, my well is truly what I like to say, my, my purpose, my passion for what I do and for what I love to celebrate. And in this case, it's Mexico. I like to say my Mexico because all Mexicos are different to everyone, right? We all have our own type of Mexico. I like to say Mexico instead of Mexican just because it's more true to what I represent. Uh, there's things that we do here that maybe aren't done in other Mexican restaurants or maybe are not done in Mexico, but truly I like to express what my parents taught me, what I've learned about my culture, what I love about Mexico. And <laughs> Bravo, I, yes. I, I love that because every time I've been in your restaurant, not only is your service amazing, but the dishes are completely a work of art. Yes. And that's I, what I love about it. I definitely consider myself an artist as well. And yes. I think that's the uniqueness about Maya Web. It's not only our job to care for our guests, it's also our goal to amaze them. And I truly uh, love that line, de developed it myself in trying to figure out how to amaze guests. And, you know, I thought, how do I how do I express what Maya Well is? And that, that just came to my mind and said, it's not only our, our job to take care of our guests, it's also our goal to amaze them. So when you walk into that front door, when you get a cocktail, when you uh, make a phone call, enjoy a nice cocktail, uh, when you're presented with your meal, I want you to be amazed. And the beautiful thing about Maya Well is that, you know, it's a place about tequila. And I'm gonna introduce you to this beautiful tequila. Tequila is, is just in this amazing spirit. It's an amazing liquid that we should honor. You know, in the past, it was all about shooting tequila. Right. And that's not honoring tequila because, you know, a plant, an agave plant, takes seven to 12 years to grow in order to harvest, to produce this beautiful juice and liquid as I like to call it, because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's just amazing to me that we have to wait that long to produce this. Whereas like wine, you know, for a grape, you, you get a harvest every year. Right. And I love wine. But, you know, my, my drink of choice, my celebration of choice is with tequila. It's truly an amazing spirit. It's connected to my culture. 
to my heart and to my ancestors, if we want to say, you know. The... So we're going to learn about this beautiful liquid um, and tell us a little bit about not only how it takes seven years to harvest and then you were sharing with me that the, it has to be replanted. So yes. it's not going to grow out another no. agave plant. That is what most of us don't know. And when you learn that, you really start appreciating tequila because, you know, like I mentioned with wine, you get a harvest every year. Right, right. But with tequila, once you separate it from the earth, as I like to say, because mm -hmm. it's a, it's, you know, it's something to do with, with our spirit, mother nature. Mm -hmm. And when you separate that plant from the earth to create this juice, it's gone forever. Wow. Right? That's why we have to honor it. It's almost like Dia de los Muertos, right? We're celebrating our past and our ancestors. And that's truly what I do with tequila. So no more shooting tequila, folks. No, you definitely want to sip it. And when you enjoy tequila, you know, this is actually one of my favorites. Uh, this is by Tomas Estes, uh, a beautiful man that loves our culture. And he was actually a restaurateur that um, produced this beautiful tequila. Um, he also is a restaurateur, but he is very well respected for what he did with this tequila. Um, this is an Añejo tequila. Wow, folks. I'm going to have the privilege of tasting this tequila with Ernesto tonight. So Tomás Estes, he truly wanted, you know, to keep it as a tequila. Most añejos, you'll notice that they're darker in color, mm -hmm. but he, and, and you can age it, you know, dip for as long as it's during a certain period of time, you can uh, keep it, or call it añejo. But the idea that it, he took it out on the early stages of becoming an añejo, and that's why it's a little bit lighter oh, in color. Wow. Beautiful. Because he really wants it to be a tequila where you know uh, some tequilas or tequila makers they might wait till the end to get more of the influences of the oak that's being aged in the barrel or maybe you know the the a, a lot of these tequilas are aged in Jack Daniels used bourbon barrel so you're even getting some of those notes mm -hmm. but as I like to uh, toast with tequila first I always love to hold the glass this way I learned this today and I like to raise my glass to honor our past um, and everything it takes to produce this plant from the seven to 12 years to you know the separation of the earth. And truly when you sip and enjoy tequila, it should be with someone that you love. And I always like to touch it to my heart, okay. raise the glass and then take a sip. Wow. It, it's spiritual, it's lifting, it, it, it makes me smile obviously yes, it's, because it's, 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 it's not about, you know, intoxication, it's about celebration, it's about honoring and then once I, you know, already had one sip, I will switch to the, to the glass okay. and then I might toast if you, and do an X. Okay. Very it good. lingers and then you sip again. I know I'm going to have a few of my colleagues who wish they would have taken this job today <laughs> because this is truly an experience. Um, I, like so many of you, have learned to, you know, try to get that tequila taste out of your mouth as soon as possible, but this is just a very soft, very yes. lovely. And it still has what I call that nice, clean burn that I personally love. It, it's so almost delicious, right? I want to say that it's very delicate, it's but very it's still delicate. tequila. Yes, and that's why it's still, I like that little burn that it has because it's, you can tell that it has amazing quality. And for all of you out there, I tr the way to be introduced to tequila, if if you had some, you know, past or uh, bad experiences, I can definitely tell you, come to my well, we can educate you. Just uh, ask any server, bartender. We do tequila flights at the table, at the bar. 
But when you taste tequila, never shoot. Always just touch it to your lip first. And you know, let your cleanse your palate. Introduce it to your to your palate, to your body, so that your brain knows, you know, that it's delicious. So then you take a second sip. Wow. And what you'll notice is that it becomes better yeah. and better and better. It's almost like it's living, breathing coming better and better each time you take a sip. You know, um, the first time I did a, a tequila tasting was here at Mayawa, and I was really blown away by, you know, the fact that you you smell it. Yes. And that you take in the aroma, and I never have done that with tequila. So if you come to Mayawa, any of you can become an expert and really wow your friends and family. So this is what Ernesto at Maya Wall has to offer. He does have uh, other restaurants, but this is one of my favorites. Yes. So we also have a tequila club and we do special tequila events. So anyone can go on to our website, experiencemayawell.com, and you can become a member free and you only get those invitations. You won't get any other uh, type of marketing or anything, only those uh, special invites to the Art Tequila dinners. And what we do, like Tomas Estes has been here when Mayawell first opened, he came to Mayawell and did a full tequila dinner. And that those are something like uh, a winemaker's dinner at a winery, but we do tequila dinners here at Mayawell, so. That's great information. I mean, you guys are in for a treat. Uh, we're going to segment over to our first margarita, so get ready, get your ingredients. If you uh, were one of the first 50, 60 people to join, you would have received an amazing kit uh, with everything you're gonna need to make these delicious uh, mar handcrafted margaritas. And so we're gonna cut into that segment to where you're gonna learn. So get all your things out. We also sent you the recipe, so if you weren't, part of the first uh, few people that were able to, to get this kit, you obviously can purchase it and make them with us. So I'm looking forward to the next segment uh, for us to transition into making the margaritas. Hi you guys, my name is Karina. I am actually really excited to be here. This is my favorite Mexican restaurant. I used to live in Los Angeles and I would come home and this is where I would like to eat with my family and friends. Um, they really just bring out the culture of Hispanics and the spirit of tequila and what better way to gather. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my friend Joel. He is an expert mixologist. He's actually a chef as well. He's you know, jack of all trades. He can really educate you about the history and the love and passion of the owner here. And um, thank you for being here with us, Joel. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for uh, inviting me uh, to do this project with you. Um, first nice. off, I'd like to give you thank what you. everybody at home should have received. Um, this is your spicy margarita awesome. kit. Oh, perfect. It has everything, even the agave and salt. Right, absolutely it does. Great. Perfect. So now, yeah. So what I can we're going to do it. Yep. What we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, walk everybody through what to do at home while we uh, prepare it as we would in the restaurant. So if you'd like to start getting your ingredients out on okay. the board here. Okay. Sure. So we have our limes with your shaker bottle. Oh, very cool. So we can actually, if you don't have a shaker, you can just use the bottle provided. Correct. Awesome. And what kind of tequila is this? So it's El Jimador, it's a Blanco tequila. And the reason why we like to use Blanco is because the flavor profile of it is very subtle. It's not gonna take over the rest of the drink. So it's perfect to uh, put in a margarita. Awesome, yeah. and I know with other drinks you usually do um, simple syrup, but with tequila they always use the agave, which is comes from the heart or the pineapple? Correct. They call so it? it comes from the piña of the agave plant. So Perfect. this this nectar is it's beautiful. It's sweet. Uh, it, it helps to sweeten your margarita, and it gives that nod to the process of making tequila. Um, it's just perfect. That's awesome. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get all of our ingredients out here. So you're gonna have your salt, your uh, El Jimador tequila, 
your agave nectar, we have your pepino, you'll have a jalapeno, and three limes. And so what I'm gonna have you do first is take your shaker bottle. Okay. I'm gonna take mine. And we're gonna start preparing the lime juice. So if you just wanna go ahead and cut all these limes in half. Okay, great. There you go, no problem. Just gonna start squeezing all these into here. So you don't wanna be stingy with the lime. We're gonna use all three. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two, two and a half, and we're gonna reserve uh, the last lime for uh, rimming your glass at home. If you don't have a glass you wanna use, you can use the shaker bottle itself. So it's just gonna help the salt stick to the rim of the glass. Great, and is this actually um, for one serving, or are we doing two in this? So this is good enough for two servings. Okay. Um, it can make two drinks. Um, unless you want a strong one. Right, unless yeah. you want to party a little bit. <laughs> so we're gonna leave this last lime segment over here to help rim your glass. Okay, perfect. Go. And then we're gonna start working uh, to make segments out of your pepino for okay. garnish later. So we're gonna come in at about a 60 degree angle and make a couple slices here. Great. If you'd like to continue on doing that. Sure. No problem. Oh no. That's fine. It happens. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. perfect. So we're gonna take these over here and then we're gonna peel the rest of the pepino. Okay. And the reason why we're doing that is to get rid of uh, the bitterness from the peel. What we want is that refreshing core of the pepino into our margarita. So the cool thing that I've noticed with margaritas is it's really um, organic, right? Everything is freshly made. It's not, you're not using any, like I said, temple syrup or right. anything like that. Correct, so everything's fresh, um, and that, that really impacts the taste of the drink. Okay. So what we're doing here. It's healthier, right? Right, Less absolutely. Less calories, like a skinny margarita version. Right, Right. correct. <laughs> so we're just gonna make some cubes out of this. Just like to do that to the other side sure. here. And this is gonna be to? This is gonna be uh, to muddle okay. into the margarita itself. So we're just gonna put that right in the lime juice here. Right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna peel your pepino. Um, after you're done peeling it, you're gonna cut it in half and then half again. And then as you see her doing over here, you're just gonna make little segments out of that. And the whole thing is gonna be going into your glass. So gonna, you're, you're gonna use the whole pepino for this drink? Right, correct. So it, it's gonna add a lot of freshness to this. Okay. And so we're gonna come over here with a muddler. If you don't have one of these at home, you can use a spoon. Uh, you can use um, a, a, like a dowel or anything you have around the house. So we're just gonna go in here. And what this is doing is it's infusing that lime juice with the refreshing uh, inner core of the pepino and it's getting all the nutrients. Like you said, it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. So it's getting all the nutrients and that refreshing pepino taste directly into our margarita. So if you'd like to finish sure. that. And I saw you were kind of twisting it like this, right? Right, so you're gonna push down and twist. Okay. And what that's doing is it's hitting all the way to the bottom of your glass and it's crushing it. Okay, do you have to feel like it's a certain puree or just enough to just really? Just get enough, the majority of it. Yeah, just enough to get the majority of it and uh, once it starts coming together, it's okay if there's a couple chunks left in there, that's absolutely fine. Okay. You let me know when. That looks perfect. Okay, great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take your jalapeno. You're good. So this is what it's supposed to look like here. So everything's mixed together. Um, the cucumber has started to be bro uh, broken down. It's infused with the lime juice. Uh, this is gonna be the perfect base to this margarita. So the thing we're gonna do to add a little kick to it is we're gonna cut up some jalapeno segments. 
Now, is there a way to maybe make it a more mild? I know there's some people may not like too spicy or can be scared of using the jalapeno. Um, what's your suggestions on having the extra kick of flavor, but not really heat? Right, so what I would suggest to everybody at home is to take their jalapeno, just like this, and you're gonna half it. And you can half it again if you'd like. And what you wanna do is you wanna take out the inner ribbons and the seeds. That's what holds all the capsaicin. That's what makes it really hot. Okay. And then you're just left with the meat of uh, the jalapeno itself. You can cut that. You can put that directly in there and muddle okay. that in with the cucumber. Okay, that's yeah. great. That way, if they want to add, if they want it a little more spicy, they can either leave, leave the seed or just kind of build on that, right? Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Great. So we like it a little spicy. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is the same thing with the cucumber. Um, we're just going to go ahead and work it in there, just like that. That's going to be the base for awesome. your margarita. That's great. Looks, it smells good. Thank you. <laughs> so the next step of what we're going to do uh, to finish this drink is we're going to prepare um, a glass of your choice. We're going to get a couple plates out. Um, on one plate, we're going to put lime juice. And the other plate, we're going to put your salt. And is this regular salt, like if you happen to make a heavy pour on the first one and then you want a second one and you gotta go get into your sash of tequila, what kind of salt is this? So this is kosher salt. And okay. the reason why we use this is the grains of it is quite large. Okay. So it, it's a lot better to stick to the edge of your glass and it tastes a lot better than normal table salt. Okay, that's but, good to know. Yeah, we provided a lot of salt here. It should be more than enough to rim, rim a couple glasses, no okay. problem. perfect. So if you'd like to take your glass okay. and go ahead and rim one. I personally like tahine. I don't know if I would necessarily do salt, but would you say that you can also rim it with tahine? Absolutely. If you have it at home? Absolutely. Uh, here at the uh, at Maya Well, uh, we like to use tahine uh, for a lot of our margaritas. And just like you were saying, it's a beautiful pairing. Um, especially with a, a spicy margarita like this, tahine would go perfect. And then say you want to do another style of margarita and you'd rather do some sort of fruit, some say you have strawberries right now, strawberries are everywhere in season, so could you, instead of muddling the cucumber, throw in strawberries or any type of fruit of your choice? Right, so just like the steps we've done so far, if you want another fruit or to add another fruit to this, you can. Um, and just like you were saying, you would muddle it in directly with the lime juice. Um, and it doesn't stop at fruits. You can do other vegetables as well if you'd like. Um, and it's just, you, you start off over here, and as soon as you're done squeezing your lime juice, uh, if you don't want jalapeno and you want some other type of fruit, you can go ahead and add strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, whatever you want, awesome. and it's gonna be just as good. Sounds good. So what we're gonna do here um, to your margarita is we're gonna add about half of your agave nectar. Okay. And if you want it to be a little bit more sweet, you can go ahead and add the full thing. a little more, like more on the sweeter side. Right. And then you're going to take your El Jimador tequila Thank and you. you're going to add that full bottle. Okay. And if you don't want it as strong at home, you can go ahead and dial it back we're a little just, bit. We're, we want it strong. <laughs> right. We're hard working people here. <laughs> and then do you add ice to it or? Yes. Okay. So you don't want to add too much. You just want to add enough to get it cold. So maybe a quarter cup of ice. Just gonna put this on here. So see guys, you can use this same jar for the whole process, which is great. You just wanna shake it up until everything is um, infused together and everything's mixed around. And I know you're being cautious because it's in the jar, but is there like a key way to really shake in a shaker, is it supposed to be over your shoulder? Like <laughs> This will do it, um, okay. but if you want to look cool, you can go ahead and shake <laughs> anywhere you want and go behind your head. Wow, that's <laughs> pretty impressive. So that's it, all shaken up. I guess the only other part would be to just be cautious in pouring it. Right, so you can actually at home, if you don't have a strainer, you can use the back end of oh, your lid, nice. and that, that'll stop all the uh, segments of pepino and jalapeno from falling into your drink. 
So what we're gonna do, if you'd like to put some ice into your glass. Sure. I'm gonna fill the glass up all the way with ice. Okay. We're gonna be careful here. I'm gonna have you do this part. Okay. You're the expert. Ah, oh, see? That's perfect for one drink, I love it. Right. And then you can take uh, your jalapeno or your pepino at home. You can rim your glass with it. You can decorate it however you like. Um, you, I, I suggest putting tahini on your pepino if you have any tahini at home. Okay. So you have a little snack as you're drinking. That's and that's awesome. it, that's the spicy margarita from Maya Well. Nice, well, the only thing that's left is to, to cheers and sip it. Do you have another one? Yay. So this is how we would prepare it at the restaurant. The fancy way. The fancy way. So that was about two ounces. This is gonna be about an ounce and a half of agave nectar to two ounces of Alfimador tequila. And then we're gonna add some ice to it. And just like you would in your shaker bottle, we're just gonna shake it up and get everything infused together. And this is when you can act cool if you want to. <laughs> you said over the head. Yeah. We want to see it. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> then first off here, we're going to rim our glass. Oh, maybe with the tahin. Yeah. So we're going to do half tahin, half salt, make it look real pretty. Take it. Put some ice into it. Perfect. And I made some garnishes earlier. And there you go. Awesome. A spicy margarita. Well, that looks great. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Hopefully yours tastes as good as I know this one will. Mm. Dangerous. Yeah. Wow. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our kitchen here at Maya Well with Chef Eduardo, our team, and just want to thank you for uh, taking the time to see this video, see our process. Uh, our pozole verde, if you haven't had it, it's one of our most popular dishes here at Maya Well. Just want to go through a little bit of a bird's eye of what we do in our kitchen. Later we'll showcase, you know, a more simple recipe for you at home that you can uh, cook yourself. But here we're going to show you how we do it in large production for all of you when you come in as our guests at Maya Well. Um, our pozole verde, we start with only chicken breast, um, onion, start from the left to the right. Obviously we use salt, salt is an enhancer, um, makes our food taste amazing. Garlic, bay leaf, onion, and of course the star of the show is Pozole, which we all know as hominy. Um, then we go to, you know, you almost need it in every di Mexican dish. Cilantro, jalapeno, serrano, tomatillo, bouillon, as we know as consume, garlic, and the famous Mexican spice, oregano, Mexican oregano. There's two varieties. Make sure you always use Mexican oregano. So, let's get started, Chef Eduardo. So here, uh, we're gonna create, start creating our chicken stock by cooking the, the chicken breast. We'll go ahead and let him add that. Now we're gonna add all our spices. So he's gonna bring all our spices. So this here will cook up, up to an hour 
as you can see, it's large scale, big pot. But traditionally, in Mexican culture, pozole is considered a celebratory meal. So you find this pozole in almost every holiday, every celebration, every type of, you know, maybe it's a, 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 a Sunday with the family. Pozole is very popular. Why? Because you can make it in a large batch and it's really easy to serve. But please come enjoy our pozole here at Maya Well. Our pozole verde is amazing. We're gonna go in more into a little bit of the process. We're gonna start with the oil here. The onion, the garlic, the serranos, and of course the jalapeno. As it gets hot here, we're gonna start, you know, you're gonna see the oil get hotter. Everything will start to almost caramelize. Um, and we're gonna get a light fry here before we actually make our sauce, our, uh, our greens salsa to put into the pozole, to make it what we call as a green pozole. So now we're gonna add the tomatillo. Wow, look at that. That's for a large family, the family of Mayawel, right? All of you guests, you are our family. So we are creating in large scale so that you all can enjoy our green pozole. And here's one of our stars. We know him as Pajarito. He is, you know, the life of the kitchen. He constantly sings, dances, and obviously a true professional in his art. This is what goes on top of our pozole verde. And look at those skills. It's truly amazing. This beautiful fresh radish goes on top of our pozole. It's something that we definitely want to showcase. Say hi, pajarito. Salud, gracias. Hi, everyone. Um, on your recipe for uh, pozole verde de pollo, um, it indicates that you can use a whole chicken and I'm going to be going over the steps it takes to butcher your own at home. Uh, what I like to call is quartering your chicken. So let's make sure we have everything we need in order. We have our cutting board. Make sure you have a really sharp knife. We have your chicken. Go ahead and remove any gizzard from the cavity. Make sure it's nice and clean inside and then we want to have a vessel to put everything in. Now the first stage or step we're going to do is we're going to come right along the breast down and to the thigh and then you want to push on the thigh until you see the thigh bone itself poke out and then you take your knife and it's nice and clean and then you have your leg and thigh section here. We're going to do that same step on the other side. So see if I can turn it around to show you a little bit better. So right there, there's a flap of skin that separates the breast from the thigh and leg. You just want to follow it down with your knife here. Then you want to pop it. And then follow your knife right into that cavity. And it's going to come right off nice and clean, just like that. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the skin off of our breasts. So with your fingers, you just follow the, the skin underneath the breast itself and just peel it right off. Okay. Do a little cleanup work as you go. Now the chicken breast has a sternum. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow along the sternum with your knife to extract the breast from what we call the cage of the chicken or the frame. So there we go. Do a little bit of cleanup work. It's okay if there's any bones left over. You just wanna remove some of the fat, some of the skin. And then you have your breast with your tenderloin place that into your vessel. 
We're gonna do the same thing on the other side of the chicken with the other breast. So follow that bone. And as you move your knife through, the breast falls off. So it kind of helps you out as you go. Here. So a little bit of cleanup work here. And you want to leave this hole. Put it right there under your vessel. So we have two boneless, skinless chicken breasts. What we're going to do here is we're going to pop off the wings. So there's a piece of skin attached from the flat to the drumette. And you're going to follow that skin down with your knife. And you're going to pull towards you. And you're going to see that break there. And what we're going to do there is we're just going to follow our knife into that break. And it's a nice clean cut. With these, you don't have to skin them. Um, it, it adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit of depth uh, during your cooking process. So we're going to go ahead and leave those on, skin and bone. We're going to come over here and do the same thing to the other side. So now what you're left with is your chicken frame with two drumettes and skin. Now at home, you can either choose to remove the skin or not. It's up to you. If you choose to remove it, that's okay. We're gonna leave it intact today. We're gonna put the whole frame or cage right here, and that's gonna go into the water during your cooking process. Now with your drums and your thighs, what I like to do is skin them since we have enough skin from everything else going in. And you're just gonna follow it all the way down, discard it on both of them. You could also keep your skins and fry them in a little bit of oil um, and toss with vinegar and salt, and that makes a really nice snack. You're gonna leave your thigh and your drum attached. And then that is the process of quartering a chicken for your pozole de verde. Yeah. Welcome to our kitchen here at Maya Well. As you can see, we're all set up here for our pozole verde here in the kitchen at Maya Well. We have our large production of our daily menu going on. So it's gonna be quick and fast, but I'd love for you to see how you're gonna make this at home. Um, let's go ahead and you know get our chicken started. Um, this is the chicken that we prepped for you earlier on in the video. We're including the whole chicken. We're gonna add all the aromatics. Onion, garlic, bay leaf. Always salt, right? Salt is an enhancer. You have to do it at the, every step along the way. Let's do a couple pinches there. And then you get the season to flavor. Here's your water. Very important to start with high heat. And as it, as it starts uh, getting hotter, then, you know, do it medium heat. So we're gonna let that go for about an hour. Uh, uncover, and then finally when that happens, um, we'll come back and show you the next process. So the next step is to include our beautiful hominy. This is after an hour. Um, and then maybe you're going to do another 20 minutes with the hominy. As you can see, we've uh, switched around our pots here, but we're going to go ahead and condition the, pan, the pot here. We're going to fry the ingredients. We start with our oil. garlic, peppers. We want them translucent. We don't want them to brown. 
just I invite you to look at that color. Look how beautiful the contrast of the green with the white. So you definitely don't want the browning to come in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add the tomatillo. More green, more beautiful color. All right, now let's add this water. Ooh, I love the smell of that. That reminds me of my mother. So this is gonna be about 20 minutes. Quick stir. All right, now we are ready to start making the magic happen. We're gonna go ahead and take this and put it into a blender. Go ahead and put everything in the blender. Our beautiful juice. And can't forget the garlic. All right, let's start the process here. Safety, very important. Okay, now that it's blended down, I'm gonna add the last of the ingredients. Our cilantro. Our bouillon. And of course, salt. Three pinches. All right, it's, it's, it's truly important to make sure this is blended enough, blended well, and I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. Perfect, it's already there. You can definitely taste all the fresh ingredients and I love that spice. Let's go to the, kit, to the stove. Here we go. Let's get this on. This is where the magic happens. This is the start of a beautiful pozole. See that? I'm gonna go ahead and discard of the carcass here. This is what gives it that amazing flavor. And then leave this for another 20 minutes and we are ready to serve.
As you can see, now it's ready to enjoy the takeout to your table. So this has been an extraordinary experience to visit your restaurant, hear about the history of tequila, the history of why you chose uh, to bring downtown Sacramento this amazing restaurant. Uh, we're going to be tasting the margaritas and hopefully all of you have gotten a chance to prepare. And uh, we're gonna have a, our closing conversation and our clients, I hope that you guys are all enjoying this evening. It's all about bringing something different to you, something of value. Our, the person who invited you here, please contact them. They're here to answer any questions you may have. And uh, with that, we're gonna, what yeah. are we enjoying? Well, the best part is that we're gonna enjoy the cocktail, but we're also gonna to get to taste our Pozole Verde. Yes. So Pozole. we're gonna start with our cocktail. Salud. Salud. Salud to all of you. There's nothing like a margarita on a beautiful day like today. And of course, at Maya well. And now we'll hopefully get to enjoy our, we'll get to our enjoy pozole. pozole. But pozole. while it gets here, we'll salud otra vez. I love to enjoy it with the tajin on the rim. And here's our pozole. Wow. I hope, Thank you, Javier. Thank you. I hope yours turned out as beautiful as this presentation. If not, you have this recording so that we, you can try it again and again. One of our most popular dishes for lunch at Maya well is our pozole verde. I invite you to come and try it because you will be hooked. And the only unfortunate part is you'll want to be here every day for lunch after tasting this. Not a bad thing. Mm. Absolutely delicious. I hope you all are enjoying this amazing food and this time with us. Thank you for being part of New York Life. Thank you for enjoying um, this evening with us and many more fun things to come with us. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Salud. Salud.